Samsung has today launched the Samsung Galaxy J5 and the J7. The two smartphones that are revisions to last year's popular handsets offer some interesting changes. But is the Samsung Galaxy J5, which costs Rs. 13,990, worth your money? Let's find out as we review the new Samsung Galaxy J5. While in terms of looks, the J5 may not be a big departure from what we've seen from Samsung in the past, uh, it is nowhere near what the flagship handsets look like, so you're not getting an all-glass finish on this one. Samsung has, however, added a metal frame which not only adds strength but also a premium brushed look to the handset. Interestingly enough, Samsung has also added a slight edge in the reverse of the handset. Just like the new handsets, the S7 and the S7 Edge, you'll see a slight edge on the back panel of the handset, giving the handset a really nice in-hand feel. The metal bezel that runs around the device is matte finish which feels really nice according to us. The back panel has also been removed of gloss and you can see a brushed uh, plastic back panel which avoids fingerprints which has been a major issue for Samsung devices and it also adds a little bit of grip in your hand. The buttons on the phone including the home button over at the front as well as the power button on the right and the volume rockers are extremely tactile and easy to use. Specs wise, the phone features a 5.2 inch 1280x720p display. It is a Super AMOLED display, but we are slightly disappointed with the resolution as a full HD display uh, could have been included in the J5 as well as the J7. You're also looking at a Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 chipset, which again, according to us, is slightly dated. You will get 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage, and you will get micro SD card expandability up to 128GB. The phone does feature dual SIM card capability and if you have uh, two SIM cards, uh, then you can use these in dual standby. The Samsung Galaxy J5 is running Android 6 and is laid on with the Samsung's TouchWiz style user interface. They're not calling it TouchWiz anymore, but it is more or less TouchWiz. You get Samsung applications along with Google applications and Microsoft applications. The good thing about this, however, is that you can disable Microsoft applications in case you're not using them. You can also get rid of some of the preloaded applications that are there. While not being able to completely uninstall them, you can disable them and remove them from your screen so they won't consume any memory or run in the background whatsoever. We found the day-to-day -day use from the handset pretty smooth and lag-free. You get Flipboard or Briefing on the left of the main home screen and running through applications or switching between applications is quite seamless. We've only been using the handset for about a week. It's a little difficult to tell if at a later stage the phone will become laggy. Now despite the fact that it's a 1280 by 720p display, the fact that it is a Super AMOLED display adds a lot of uh, depth to the display. You get great colors, good levels of black and good outdoor visibility. It also oversaturates your color, so you're looking at an extremely vivid display, even though things may not be as vivid. So for example, if you click a picture, you will see better colors on the screen of the Samsung Galaxy J5 versus on a computer screen, for example. Speaking of pictures, the new camera is a pretty good add-on to the Galaxy J5. You're looking at a 13 megapixel snapper, which manages to click pictures really quickly. You also get f1.9, and we saw good low light performance from the camera. Uh, the video capability is only at 1080p, uh, which is a slight disappointment, but due to lack of support by the chipset, uh, the phone will not be shooting 4K video anytime soon. The camera uses the same f1.9 lenses seen in the Galaxy S6 from last year, which means that Samsung is ready to trickle down some of their good features into their budget handsets. The cameras are really good on both the J7 and the J5, however the J5 being a slightly cheaper phone, uh, has the equal advantage of the J7, uh, giving you a really good camera experience. The front camera is a 5 megapixel camera and also features a front facing flash, which may come in handy for those late night selfies. Now, the phone does support 4G capability and does have uh, good network strength throughout. We did see a bunch of call drops while using this handset. If compared to other devices in the same situations, we saw slightly more call drops on the Samsung Galaxy J5. Samsung's also included their ultra data saving feature which claims to save up to 70% data consumption. While it is very dependent on what all features you turn on or off, we found this to save about 30% data over a period of 4 days while testing it out. As far as performance is concerned, the J5 does feature a slightly dated Snapdragon 410 chipset, so you're not going to get the best of the best features or the best of the best performance in this price category. There are many other handsets that offer slightly better specifications, giving you a better benchmark score overall. However, most games will play well as they have been designed around the Snapdragon 410 quite a lot, and you will get a really good gaming experience 
but not completely lag free and not without frame losses. UI optimizations and the fact that Android 6 is preloaded on this device uh, gives it a good uh, battery life overall. The 3100mAh battery will last you easily a day or more depending on the kind of usage that you have. With our heavy usage with over 4 hours of talk time and a little bit of gaming here and there, found the device to last a full day cycle for us at least. Overall, Samsung is finally trying to up their game with a metal body and really improved cameras which seems to be more the feature used by people who buy phones in this price bracket. A good front facing as well as a rear facing camera uh, with a good micro SD card expandability you get up to 128 gigabyte. The phone is not expected to be a performance workhouse thanks to the 410 chipset that it uses. Cameras and camera capability is quite impressive and overall build quality and design of the phone make it quite an attractive device in this price bracket. However, for slightly lower you can get devices that offer much more performance capability and are available today. Leave your comments in the comment section below and you can read the full review of the new Samsung Galaxy J5 on iGAN.in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to see more reviews from iGAN. Until I see you next time guys. This has been Bharat Nagpal. Thank you guys for watching.